In 1916, two pioneering brothers set out to deliver solutions to industry with innovative gas equipment. The early designs of Harry and Jack Maxson produced substantial gains in heating flexibility and fuel efficiency. The innovative designs of Maxson Premix products filled a growing demand for new equipment to utilize a plentiful natural gas supply. Various industries such as foundries, forges, bakeries and glass plants purchased Maxson products in order to increase the useful output of furnaces, leers, ovens and other equipment. By 1924, the growing Maxson Premix company had found a permanent home in a former piano factory. That same year, the Premix blower mixer was joined with the new Sticktite nozzle to create a very flexible combination of heating equipment. Shortly thereafter, the Venttight inspirator was developed using H.R. Maxson's experience with higher pressure industrial gas supplies. With it, Maxson entered the new market of oil refining. Venttite soon became the standard supply of all crude oil furnaces for Imperial Oil and soon-to-be giant Standard Oil Company. As natural gas usage grew, so did the need to address the safe operation of heating systems. Again, the ingenuity of Jack Maxson responded with the innovation of automatic cutoff valves. These valves provided safety fuel shutoff in response to control pressures and electrical signals. Eighty years later, the modern equivalent of these valves have become one of Maxson's key products. Despite the Great Depression and the stock market crash of 1929, Maxson continued to grow. The nationwide growth in natural gas, an inexpensive, convenient industrial fuel, offset some of the pains of the Depression, keeping the company afloat. Amid this flood of activity, Harry Maxson's oldest son, Harry Red Maxson, started his tenure with the company in 1930. During this period, Maxson had developed a reputation for building high quality, durable products that added substantial value to customers' processes. The decade of the 1940s started with Red Maxson taking the helm as Maxson's new general manager. Less than two years later, the world would find itself at war. December 7, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. In this period, Maxson would grow with equipment demand for the war effort. However, equally large management challenges followed the opportunities. By late 1943, 80% of the young working staff was lost to the armed forces draft. The Second World War transformed many industries in the United States. At Maxson, a demand for heat-treating large artillery barrels led to the invention of the wide-range burner. With it, a new era in combustion technology surfaced in the form of nozzle mix burners. After almost a decade at war, the decade of the 50s saw Maxson evolve into an industry powerhouse. With 40 years of installed base, the small company from Muncie had developed a brand name in industrial heating. Moreover, Maxson had strengthened its reputation as a leader in high quality, durable products for the heating industry. After four decades, Maxson never strayed away from the qualities that made the company grow. Innovation, adaptation and dedication continued to drive growth in the company. Innovation produced a new series of air heating burners. Adaptation attracted Maxson to new markets such as Makeup Air. Lastly, a growing number of very dedicated employees provided the third component of strength, fueling growth. At 
One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In the 1960s, further developments in nozzle mixing technology created several new burners such as Series 58 Airflow, the NP burner, the Combusta fume, and the oven pack, still popular today. Also during this time, Maxon's well-established line of shutoff valves got a substantial update as the Series 808 and Series 5000 were introduced to the market. In 1966, Maxon made the first move in many stages of global expansion with the creation of Maxon International, a European subsidiary located in Brussels, Belgium. By 1972, sales in Europe would grow enough to warrant the construction of a permanent factory on land in Vilvorda, Belgium. This decade also marked an important change in Maxon's leadership. By 1973, Harry Red Maxon retired from active management status to assume a role on the board of directors. For the first time in the history of Maxon, leadership of the company had shifted to employees. Maxon had begun an important transition from a Midwestern family company to a global combustion enterprise. For the next 20 years, Maxon would meet with many challenges and many successes. Under the direction of Charles Rothar as the new president, Maxon successfully faced gas shortages and the energy crisis of the 1970s. Additionally, pollution control and air quality became major concerns. These new market factors led to the development of burners like the Lonox Airflow Burner. By the 1980s, Maxon had assumed a position as the premier combustion company, selling burners and valves all over the globe. Businesses worldwide began to evolve with new productive efficiencies and modernized manufacturing. Leading the way, Maxon held a strong commitment to teamwork within the company while focusing on building and maintaining customer relationships. While the company's philosophy remained firm, the people responsible to safeguard the values of the company continue to evolve over time. In 1979, Bob Smithson was elected to replace Charles Rothar as the president of the company. Under Bob's leadership, Maxon would continue to evolve technologies and products to meet ever-increasing customer demands. On through the 90s, industry brought with it a higher demand for reduced environmental impact, increased fuel efficiency, and added flexibility. In the mid-1990s, with a mindset of continued growth, leadership moved to Charlie Hetrick. Under Charlie's guidance, Maxon has responded with the development of new technologies and new products. When necessary, the form and size of the company has shifted in order to focus on one thing, serving the customer's needs with practical solutions. Today, Maxon is a world apart from its humble beginnings. With an additional facility in Shanghai, China, Product is now assembled on three continents. Maxon sales offices and representatives can be found in 81 different locations in 51 different countries. Over 500 employees now call Maxon home as the company continues to enjoy another era of remarkable growth. Maxon is forging a new future for industrial heating. With its technical leadership, Maxon plans to take industry even further into an era of intelligent, automated burners and near-zero emissions technologies. Today's manufacturer is an efficient global company with a sense of corporate citizenship. Maxon has become the perfect partner for growing companies with innovative products to reduce fuel usage and improve productivity of all kinds of industrial heating equipment. Although the size and coverage of the company has expanded, the values attributed to Maxon's success have remained the same for over 90 years. Through the dedication of employees, an unceasing commitment to innovation, and with an opportunistic view of new markets, Maxon will maintain its position as the premier manufacturer of combustion equipment for the world.